y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and the truth. I love the old church. That old brother, pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. What's happening, family? It's time to pray. And I want to look at several passages today as we introduce a new concept, a new thought in our prayer devotional. We're going to look at three texts, but then ultimately this series of lessons would be built around the life of Joseph. But on today, I want to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. I want to look at Genesis 50 and verse number 20. And then I want to look at Romans 28 and verse number 28. And I want to look at all of those passages to remind us of a simple concept. Let me read them first and then we'll come back and introduce the thought. In Ecclesiastes 3, the Bible says, there is an appointed time for everything and there is a time for everything under heaven or every event under heaven. Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20. You know this text very well in the narrative of Joseph. There the Bible says, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. And then finally in Romans chapter eight and verse number 28, and I dare you to go back and read that entire section, but you know this text this is another one of our shouting texts. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Each one of these passages leave an amazing thought or an amazing reality to the thought that we're going to unpack. And the concept that we're going to unpack on today is the notion of change. Change is a constant that we need to deal with. And we need to remember that in order for us to face the changes that we go through, we have to have faith that changes who we are. In order for us to face the changes that we go through, we've got to have faith that changes who we are. And I want to talk about change. I want to look at what it means, how change will um, is a part of our reality, how change is revealing and how change can be rewarding if we understand the notion of change. What do we mean when we think about change? I want to just drop this as an introductory thought. So, so walk with me and study with me if you, as you were. Change, the idea of change, the word change means to make the form, the nature, the content, the future course, etc., of something different from what it is or from what it would be if left alone. Again, look at it. It's to, it's to make the form, nature, content, future course, etc., of something different from what it is or from what it would be if left alone. The most constant thing that you need to remember about the concept of change is that everything changes. The only consistent thing in our universe is change. The most, and in addition to that, the most prominent exhibition of insanity is when people expect for things to remain the same. Did you hear that? The most prominent exhibition of insanity is when people expect for things to remain the same. This season has highlighted one of the most uh, phenomenal realities in our world, and that's change. Everything, every form, nature, content, future course of our world is made different now in light of a number of things. Some of it in light of COVID, in light of politics, in light of our societal issues, in light of culture, but most importantly, in light of sin. Change is a reality. Change is revealing about who you are and change can be rewarding if we embrace it. I want to look at all three of those stops one by one. Let's look at the first one. Change is reality. In Ecclesiastes 3 and verse number 1, you heard the text where, the, where, where, where there Solomon says, for everything under heaven, there is a time. In other words, everything's going to have some kind of change, some kind of issue, some kind of phenomenal movement. 
And when you remember the definition that, that everything, something in life will always make different the things that we deal with. For instance, if you just note that there's a catalyst making everything that you deal with different, making the nature content future course of all of that different, that you, you hold on to the fact that all it takes for something to change is for something else to be introduced. You get a new job, things change. The weather is different, things change. The virus comes into our world, things change. Death occurs, things change. Opportunities present themselves, things change. You get a little more money, things change. You get a lot less money, things show enough change. Everything in our world is change. Change is inevitable. But let me remind you of something that Arnold Bennett said. Growth, however, is optional. Now, we need to hold on to this because if the, the lesson for us very simply is if you don't change, then you're not growing. And if you don't grow, then you aren't really living. Newsflash, there are a lot of people right now who are breathing air, but just as dead as they can be. Why? Because they're not growing. Why are they not growing? Because they're not embracing change. Change is inevitable. Growth, however, is an option. And we want to remember that if you aren't changing, you won't grow. And if you don't grow, you aren't really living. We've got to learn to understand that change is a regular part of our reality. And God's going to bless us if we pay attention to deal with the things that happen in our regular world by faith that changes us to who we need to be. Let me give you the second thing. Number one, change is reality. But then number two, change is revealing. Genesis chapter 15, when we get a chance, we're going to go back and look at some of the, the snapshots of Joseph's life. And look at this picture, though. Joseph reminds us of the power of what it means to understand change definitionally, but then to embrace change dynamically. In the second point, change is revealing. Revealing how? Revealing to who God is, but revealing also to who you are. Joseph makes the statement in Genesis 15, verse number 20, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Let me give you a little context. Joseph is now a seasoned man in his 40s talking to his brothers who threw him, tried to kill him, threw him in prison, threw him in a pit, led him into prison when he was 17 years old. Some 27 years later, this older man is now looking at his brethren and really as he's looking at, this, at his brothers, he basically gets a, 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 a flashback. Uh, the ability to go back over the entire span of his life. Can I let you in on something? When you and I take a moment to pause and look over the course of our life at all the dynamics, the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ins and the outs, the things that have caused you to praise God's name and the things that have caused you to hold your head in your pillow and weep bitterly. When you look back over the span of your life, you realize that in all of the heartbeats of life known as change, and, and, and transition, what God is doing is revealing who he is, but revealing who you are. And God will always mean for the change in your life to be for good. Watch what change can do. It will reveal some things. Change will teach you about yourself. Change will let you know just who you really are. See, sometimes our problem is that we, we, we postulate one thing about ourselves, but in actuality, we are somebody else. We postulate that we have faith. We postulate that we are strong. We postulate that we have it all together. I'm dressed and all of this looking good, smelling good, everything done, hair done, nails done, everything, but just inside, just as busted as you can be. Not really your hair, not really your nails. Are you following the picture here? Not really who you are. The car is just a token. It's a trope of the emptiness of who you are. The job is a status symbol of how bankrupt you actually are. Sometimes our real self is is exposed through the shift of change. Change will teach you about yourself. Change will teach you about how, how your strength really is. It will show you just how strong you are or how weak you really are. The all it takes really to demonstrate whether or not you've got staying power is for something in your life to shift dynamically. Do you really have the strength you testify to have or is the change revealing how you need to grow? Change will show you about yourself. Change will show you about your strength or the lack thereof. Change will show you where your security really 
is do you rely on trust on anchor yourself on build yourself on rooted and built up in God or do you have your security in something else somebody else somewhere else because watch what God will do God will remove your somebody he will remove your something he will remove the status he will remove all of that just to get you to a place to let you know real security comes from God and God alone Psalm 18 reminds you God is your rock He's your sure place. Psalm 46, God is my strength. God, Psalm 23, God is my shepherd. And you remind, you are reminded of those things when change comes. Change will show you. It'll teach you about yourself. It'll teach you about your security. It'll teach you about your strength. But change will also teach you about seasons. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Listen, when God allows us to go through the shift and the dynamic of change, one of the things he'll bless you to know is a season's change. Things will not always remain the same. You've heard this over and over again. Let me say it again to your spirit. Some things we need to remember, we need to hear over and over again. We need to be reminded of the fact that this is just a season. Every part of your life is just the season. You might be on the upswing of things now. You might be feeling strong, feeling virile, feeling powerful, feeling successful, feeling all of those things right now. And all it takes after your spring and your summer of good, of a good burst of good living is for your winter and your fall to come in. And you'll realize that that shift happens on a regular basis. But because of that, it reminds you how to love God when you ain't got a whole lot. How to love God when you do have a whole lot. How to be kind when people are, are all smiles and giggles. How to be kind when nobody is praising your name. How to continue to be faith forward when things look good. How to continue to be faith forward when it's dark and you can't see in front of you. You learn through change how to, how to navigate through a season because God will bless you in the pit. He'll bless you in prison. He'll bless you in palace. He'll bless you in the situations that cause you trepidation. And he'll bless you to learn how to be second in command. God will bless you all the way through when you learn how change can teach you about yourself, about your strength, about your security, about your seasons. And change will teach you how to see. <laughs> Amen. See what, Thomas? How to see God. In every episode of your life. Notice the text. You meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Seeing God in every episode of your life allows change to always be towards your growth. Remember the first point, the change. If you don't change, you don't grow. If you don't grow, you aren't really living. If I can learn how to grow, how to see God and it move towards my growth, I'm learning how to see God so I can live in this thing. I can have then abundant life, whether things change or whether they don't change. God is always in those things. He's always moving things in such a way to bring your life from the mundane to the magnificent. And that's how God will uh, allow us to be, to see how, to reveal rather, just who we are from one moment of change after the next. Let me give you the third point so we can pray together. Change is not only, uh, change is reality, number one. Change is revealing, number two. But change is also rewarding, number three. In verse number 28, we read the text and we know that all things work together for good to those who are called, those who love the Lord. Here's something I want to remember, I want to remind you of in our definition of change. You remember I gave it to you that the idea of change is to make the form, nature, content, future course, etc. of something different from what it is or from what it would be if left alone. There's a second definition in change that I want you to hold on to. It is to transform or to convert. Change is reality. Change is revealing, but change is rewarding. God will allow us to embrace the second definition of change, to transform or to convert. We cannot outrun the reality of change, but we can change to meet the change. Did you catch that? You can change to meet the change. Who you become in the crisis of change is your choice. 
who you become, who, how you are defined in the middle of what's going on around you is in your hands. You need to hear God. God is always working. Genesis 50 and verse number 20. He's working it out for your good. God is always aimed at you and I becoming overcomers. Romans 8 and verse 31 he, or 37. God is always working to reward us from the benefit of change to allow us to reflect the God who gives us strength to face the change. Please hear me on this. God is working so that you and I can change, transform, convert to face our change so that we reflect the glory of the God who's working with us. Change is inevitable, but your growth is optional. It's in your hands and you have the ability, I have the ability in the middle of our change to reflect God's glory and stand as older Joseph, even in our younger status, to always know God's working it out. God's working it out. He's weaving it together. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know who. I don't know when. I don't know what, but I do know who. And since you know that God is the who working all of this out, you can look and say, look, I'm going to face the change that I deal with. With faith, the change is who I am. I'm going to face the change that I deal with. With faith, the change is who I am. So what do you need to do? What do I need to do? We need to understand change, number one. Number two, we need to anticipate change. And then number three, we need to face change. And you can face change through faith in God who will change who you are to deal with the change that's in front of you. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. Thank you so much for allowing us to get over the hump of our week, the hump of our life, the hump even of our season right now, Lord God, by embracing change that you bring in our life. God, we honor you and bless you because we realize that in every single moment where things have shifted and dynamics have shifted, that you're revealing more about who we are. Help us, Lord God, to see who we really are. Help us to see our strength. Help us to see who we really are say that we are versus who we actually are. Help us, Lord God, to embrace the, the sustaining power and the stabilizing power of who you are. Help us, like Joseph, to look back over the course of our life and realize how faithful you have always been and how faithful you are even right now. Help us, Lord, to embrace the power of what Paul reveals to us and know that we can be transformed. We can convert to meet the changes and the shifts and the dynamics in our life, and we can meet them one episode at a time knowing that our our God is the one who sees us through. Lord God, we ask that you bless us with the strength to deal with the seasons as they come. We pray, Lord God, that you give us the power of overlooking these situations in a way that honors you and brings you glory and helps us to be catalyst of good and, and to be a part of the healing and the dynamics that happen on an ongoing basis. God, we ask even right now that you help us to step into this moment knowing that you are an on-time God, an awesome God, and a God who never loses anything that's in his hands because you, Father, have the power to see us through. We pray even right now that as we go through this day, Lord God, that we remember that you are a God who heals, strengthens, de delivers, and renews. Help us, Father, to see this season and live every day of it just for you. We pray, Father, that you bless the many that are that are continuing to contract this virus. We pray that you keep safe those that are essential and working. We pray that you watch over our government. We pray that you be with those that are in the exchange of power even right now. Father, we pray that as we all are thinking and reeling and psychologically processing all that's going on, that you give us peace power and perspective, knowing that our God is in complete control. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. We praise and magnify you. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray, amen and amen. Listen, I'm asking and encouraging you to face the changes that you deal with, with faith, the changes who you are. Change is reality. Change is revealing. Change can be rewarding when you and I embrace the principles that God gives us day by day. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Come on, tell her, tell her, go get your shield, come on, go get your shield, come on.